Hi guys and welcome back to the third episode of the Angular Spring Boot series. If you watched the second episode, I hope that uh, you like the kind of application that we're going to build. And if that's the case, then you're in a good spot to begin our discussions about the architecture of Angular applications that use Spring Boot APIs. Now, in this episode, we're going to learn about the differences between um, web applications that use uh, vanilla JavaScript or classic JavaScript frameworks, such as AngularJS or Knockout, uh, versus the applications that actually use Angular 2, 4, and uh, 6, and you know, so on and so forth. And before we get started, uh, there's one more thing I want to tell you. I want to remind you to subscribe to this channel in order to stay up to date with the latest uh, courses that will sharpen your programming skills. Okay, that being said, uh, let's start our little episode. So, let's begin with a comparison of classic frameworks versus Angular. So in a classic web application that's developed with, you know, it can be Spring, it can be Spring Boot, or it can be any other uh, technology, we basically have one application. And let, let's imagine that this container is the application. And uh, this application contains uh, the APIs. So it contains the controllers uh, that allow us, you know, to perform gets, posts, uh, you know, uh, these sort of things. And this application also contains, you know, the views and the uh, JavaScript files that control the client-side logic. So uh, it's like a complete application, you know, it, it contains, you, you might imagine a Spring Boot application with timely views and in the timely pages you have references to JavaScript files or to frameworks, you know, and then you build this application, you get one package and you deploy this one package and that's it. That That's your classic uh, server-side application with, you know, classic JavaScript frameworks. Now, if you talk about Spring Boot and Angular, or for that matter, any server-side stack and Angular, um, we have one application uh, that is the backend or the API. In our case, it's going to be the Spring Boot API. And this API only exposes, you know, um, REST style control. So it doesn't have any views, it doesn't have any routing associated with it. Whether in the first case, uh, the routing and the views are the responsibility of the backend, okay? And then we have another application which contains the frontend, the Angular frontend. So uh, views, routing, um, UI, complexities, um, you know, are in this Angular application. So instead of having one application, now we have two distinct applications, you know, the API and the client. And if you want to publish those, you know, we need to package them and we need to deliver and run two applications instead of one. Okay, so if you come from a classic uh, JavaScript, uh, you know, framework context, this is an important change if you want to get up to date with Angular. Now, uh, if you continue this, let's take a look at the pros and cons of this uh, architecture and the pros and cons of using Angular. So obviously there are a lot of pros, like a clear separation of concerns. You know, we have the backend that's responsible only for, you know, creating endpoints that you use to allow access through your application. Um, it obviously, you know, uh, advocates for clean code and maintainability because, you know, we have an Angular app with, you know, views and routing and we have a backend and uh, things are nicely separated and code is actually easier to maintain. And I tell you this from my, uh, from my personal experience. And also, you know, this framework is really suited for large applications with complex client-side interactions. So if you have a complex app, uh, then Angular, you know, will just nail it. I mean, I've seen applications that were refactored from AngularJS to Angular and we reduced the code base. Uh, the application was, you know, much easier to understand, much easier to maintain. So it really helped us to manage complexity. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you have two applications, like I just said. So uh, deployment and builds are slightly more complex because you need to deploy two apps instead of one, you need to build two apps instead of one. And I would not say that this is, you know, um, a showstopper, but you have to take this into consideration if you're starting from scratch or if you're considering to migrate to Angular. So uh, it's good to know. 
and that leaves us with a pretty good question when should you use angular because like i said it's not suitable for all applications and based on my experience i would recommend you to use angular when your application is complex enough to justify it or when you want to test the client side as well so we have complex interactions you have a rich client and you need to perform all those tests on the client side not just on the back end so these are two scenarios where angular will really really help you so it's a good complexity manager now please don't use angular for simple apps that just have three buttons and to uh, get requests uh, because you're just adding more complexity than you need to now at this point you might be wondering hmm hey well, wait a little but your app uh, is basically a simple app note it is not complex and yes you are absolutely right uh, the app that we're going to build is not complex uh, if I were to you know build it for production so if I had the task to build that application and ship it to a customer I would not be using angular because it's just too simple but we are using the simple example because it will make uh, grasping the core angular concepts uh, a lot easier so we are building we're using angular for noted we're using spring boot you know to demonstrate how to integrate these two together but uh, if you had uh, an application like that to build well I wouldn't recommend you to use angular in the real life but for complex applications no go for it and let's talk a bit a bit about noted so in our case we have a Spring Boot API app. We'll have another application that uses Angular. And this application is now responsible for views, routing, and UI logic. And these two components will communicate using HTTP requests. For example, if you want to grab all the nodes, uh, the Angular app is going to issue a request to the Spring Boot API. A Spring Boot API will return an answer, and then it's the client application's responsibility to decide what to do with the uh, response so basically all the interactions between Spring Boot and Angular will be uh, done in this manner now in the next episode we are going to actually you know start the uh, the practical stuff and we are going to see uh, how to install the dependencies that are needed to create and run Angular applications before we close, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills. Just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button. Also, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, thoughts or ideas for new courses, just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at RomanianCoder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com. Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye.